Happy New Year 2022. I hope you had an amazing holiday weekend and you enjoyed some time off with your friends and family. But now it's time to get back to the business because tomorrow, January 3rd, 2022 is a very exciting day. It is the first trading day of the year. If you are on this channel, most probably you are an investor or looking to invest. If you have never invested, I highly recommend that you check out my previous video where I talk about the quick three tips on how you can start investing. If you are already an investor, this is the time when you look through the year and strategize. And in this video, I will share six tips with you that you should keep in mind when you start investing, whether you are adding to a position or whether you are opening new position. And this applies for all asset classes, regardless whether you're investing in stocks, crypto or any other commodities. So if that is something you're interested in, keep watching and let's get this rolling. 2021 was a very exciting year because the S&P 500 returned 28%, the Nasdaq returned 23% and Dow Jones Industrial returned about 20% or so. So it was a very good year for the index standpoint. Now, if you were investing in very small caps, which were not part of the index funds, most probably you have not seen a great year and a lot of growth stocks got hit throughout 2021. So what do we learn from that? So the strategy that you used in 2020 did not work in 2021. And the strategies you used in 2021 may or may not work in 2022. However, there are six tips which I will share, which is also backed by Warren Buffett and other prominent figures. And that is the basis and fundamental of all investments. Tip number one, invest in what you understand. There is a very famous quote from Warren Buffett, never invest in a business that you do not understand. This tip definitely holds a lot of water because if you do not understand the products and the services the company is offering, most likely you would not be able to pick up those changes in the financials or the outlook of the company. And you may miss out on gains or even covering some losses down the road. And one of the easy ways to know if you understand the company, if you cannot understand what the company does in the 10 minutes, I would highly recommend that you switch on and go to the next idea because there are so many companies out there that you will be able to understand their products and services and assess for yourself if that is the right investment for you or not. Tip number two, when you are buying a company, think from a long perspective. This does not mean that you do not buy companies for short term trading. However, when you are building out your portfolio, think from a standpoint where you have your core positions, which I would say ride or die, which means that you will stick with those companies or those core positions for a very, very long time, which I mean decades could be 10, 20, 30, whatever you get the point. However, you can also build out portfolios based on mid term and short term investments, which means that you are going to buy and sell those securities or assets in a relatively shorter time frame. One of the famous quotes from Phil Fisher talks about that if you have invested in a quality company, the time to sell that company is never. So what are some of the core positions that you can build? Well, first and foremost, you can always invest in index funds like SPY, like IVV, like VTI, VOO, those could easily become your core positions because that gives you enough diversity from a stock standpoint. Now, if you are more inclined towards putting stocks as your core positions like myself, you can always look at companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, and so many other great companies from all different types of industries. Tip number three, diversify with caution. Well, simply put, if you end up buying 40, 50 stocks in your portfolio, you probably are thinking that you are diversifying, but you are also diluting the impact of winners in your portfolio. If you are going to invest equally in all those 50 stocks, the chances are that your portfolio will not see those massive gains. If you want to take advantage of diversification, you can always have a combination of good quality stocks and ETFs like index fund ETFs. That will give you the most appropriate diversity in your portfolio. Personally, I like to hold core positions where I invest in these high conviction core position stocks, which are my ride or die stocks for a very, very long time. However, I also contribute some 
towards those index fund ETFs. So be very careful when you add more stocks in your portfolio from a standpoint of diversification. Tip number four is most of the news is noise. All the news articles that come out, most of the negative news titles get the most clicks because that's how human brain works. So most recently, Tesla recalled a lot of cars. What does that mean? Now, do you go ahead and sell Tesla stocks? Absolutely not. Tesla recalling these cars, this is a common trend among automobile manufacturers. We have had so many recalls from Honda, Toyota, GM, Ford, which means that all traditional car companies have had recall at some point in time. It just goes to show that the company is taking appropriate steps to make sure the consumers do not get impacted. So this is actually a very good sign. However, you will also see articles which will talk about, is this the right time to sell Tesla? So when you are investing in your core positions, which are long term, you need to filter out these noises from your investment thesis. Most of these news articles are generated to create a buzz because that's what their job is. If you are investing in high quality stocks, index funds, ETFs, or any high conviction asset, most likely these news articles are not going to be impacting those. And if it does, you should go back and assess rather than getting jittery and panic selling it. Tip number five, investing is not rocket science. However, it's not easy either. One of the quotes from Warren Buffett says, you don't need to be a rocket scientist. Investing is not a game where the guy with the 160 IQ beats the guy with 130 IQ. It does not take you to be a genius in stock market to start investing and actually be performing or outperforming the market. Now, of course, we do understand that on an average in the last 100 years, it is improbable to beat the stock market year after year after year. But we also need to understand that every year is a new year, which means that there are new different environmental macro factors that will come into the picture. So what has happened in the past may or may not happen in the future. History provides us clues for the future, but it does not mean that that is how it's going to happen. Investment is also not easy, which means that you have so much information out there that you could make mistakes at any point in time. So what comes out from this is that though investment is not rocket science, it is also not easy. But as long as you stay true to your research and spend the time that is required in understanding where you're putting your money, it is possible to become a good investor and increase your assets. Tip number six, investing is boring. And what I mean by this is that if you are going to be investing for a long term, most probably it is not a roller coaster ride for you. Most of the moves that you will make are going to be mundane. It's going to be dollar cost averaging into your core positions or even midterm positions. And then if you want to make it really exciting, you probably should look into options trading or becoming a day trader. Now, I'm not saying that this is what you should be doing to make it more exciting because day trading, options trading, they are a different ball game altogether. We are talking about investment and most of the investment philosophy talks about you invest for a long term dollar cost average and there is really no get rich quick scheme here. Your goal of investment is to find good quality companies and stick with them for a long time. And if your research is true to what you think how the company will go, most probably your portfolio will show those results. So those were my tips for investing in 2022. And I really wish a very happy and prosperous new year. If you found any value of today's video, don't forget to hit the like button, click on subscribe and ring the bell notification. I will see you next time my investor family, but don't forget to invest for tomorrow.